back uh, once again with the Renegade uh, with the C6. So the job the other day was to do the drive bolt idlers and tensioner. The bearings worked. I managed to buy two bearings and take the tensioner and the idler apart, replace the bearings, put it all back together again. And now it's sweet. I think the tensioner and an idler new would have been over 200 quid for the both and you'd have to find them. A um, couple of bearings, about 11 pounds. Okay, so the last MOT threw up some advisories. Um, it hasn't done many miles since then. In fact, it had done 153,475 miles on the last MOT and it's now done. One hundred and fifty five thousand one hundred and sixty one. Not many because we had a sort of weird pandemic thing happen and uh, it was in the middle of that. So not that many miles. Um, also, I don't live very far away anyway, but it went in for an MOT. It passed first time having done some of the work, but it did get a few advisories. So I'm going to attack some of those advisories today because I'm pretty sure they're going to evolve into failures. Um, and I need to get this thing on the road. So, the first thing it got an advisory on was an offside front steering rack gator damaged or deteriorated, but preventing the ingress of dirt. It's got a thwacking great hole in it now. So, uh, there we go. Steering rack gator. That'd be fun to change. And because I'm gonna be taking the track rod end off, a track rod end. And because I'm doing the track rod end on this side, I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Front brake disc, worn, pitted or scored, but not seriously weakened. I have new brake discs to go all the way around, as well as front pads, rear pads, and... No, that's it. That's all there is. Discs and pads. Near side front suspension arm pin or bush worn, but not resulting in excessive movement. Same for the off side. That's where this little box of tricks comes in. That, believe it or not, is a ball joint. It doesn't look like it. It looks like a frog's footprint, but it's uh, there's a bearing in there and it presses onto the bottom of the uh, knuckle and it pivots on that. But I did also think that the top might have gone as well. So I've got that as well. And then there's some bushes in the uprights, which I, I had to do. Oh, and I had to buy a special tool. Yeah, this is to, uh, to change those bushes that I bought that weren't actually on the advisory or anything. Um, but they do tear through them and if I'm going to have the car I want it to drive as well as it can and I don't know how old the bushes are I think one of them has been done but I don't know what brand it is it could be some rubbish one but there were some other issues as well um, it's always made a funny noise from this wheel a kind of a whirring noise with speed so you'd think that's wheel bearing but it might also be CV joint. That's a very long CV joint, I know. You can't buy them on their own. Useful. So, entire drive shaft. Also, I have bushes. Um, these aren't normal bushes. These are purple bushes, I think. Let me check. I'm not fitting them if they're not purple. They are purple bushes. Why am I fitting purple bushes, if you might say, to my C6? It's not a track car, it's not a race car. There's more for the front. I've also got the back. It's not every bush on the front, it's only the lower ones. They don't do any others. Um, yeah, why am I fitting them? Well, for a number of reasons. Firstly, I don't notice any difference in NVH or refinement when fitting poly bushes to a car. I've done it on a number of cars, including my AX GT that I mechanically restored. And I fitted poly bushes on that with OEM Bilstein dampers and 
everything. It wasn't tuned, it was a standard car, just with poly bushes, and it made it silent to drive. It was brilliant. It was the nicest drive an AX GT I've driven, and it done quarter of a million miles. So that was saying something. The other reason I like these is because the crush tube that goes on the inside of the bush is a separate part. You grease it and you push it in like so. That allows the bush to rotate on the tube like a bearing, which is how Citroens should be. The bushes fitted to this are standard metalastic rubber bushes where the rubber is bonded with the tube which means that any time the wishbone moves like this, it's twisting the rubber. And eventually the rubber will either break its bond from the metal tube or split, crack, perish. These have a lifetime warranty. I'm not anticipating any drop in refinement by fitting these, but I do think it will handle better. The steering will be slightly sharper and hopefully it'll be quiet. The only car I've ever fitted these to that made it worse was a Saab 9.3. And that handled quite badly to start with. So it seems to me that if you have a car that handles badly and you put those bushes on it, you'll probably make it even worse. But if you have a car that handles well, i.e. AXGT, it'll make it better. I'm hoping that it makes this better, but if it doesn't, as long as it makes it quiet, I don't care. So the first job is gonna to be to jack it up, which it is. Uh, wheel off, brakes off, start pulling suspension apart and then try and get that drive shaft out. There's life growing in my C6. Fair bit of meat on those. But you wouldn't refit these with, uh, with new discs, so they can be changed. I've just gone to remove the, or uh, well, to undo the lock nut for the track rod end while the thing's all assembled. The brake disc's gone now, that's down there. Um, but yeah, this gate, look, that's what it got the advisory on. Because I think last year that was just a kind of a bit of a perish, perished situation like that. But now look, it's split completely. Oh, wow. Yeah, look, that's, that's a definite fail. Hey, first time, honestly. You know, when I was doing Cecily, no, that sounds dodgy. When I was repairing the Citroen C5, and I bought a certain brand of track rod end and then I had a bit of a rant because it didn't come with the uh, half nuts. Well, I had already bought the same brand again. So let's have a little bet and see whether that comes with the half nuts or not. That nut there is properly stuck on. Right, I'm gonna leave the steering rack gator for now. Ooh, I've got twin pot calipers. And one of the pistons is bigger than the other. A sensor. On an old Citroen with green blood, you have a mechanical valve on each anti-roll bar. So one on the front, one on the back. On the C6, you have electric sensors, one on each wheel. So it's not just doing it axle to axle, it's doing it each corner. In fact, when you, uh, set the suspension up on the C6, you effectively have to let the car corner weight itself. You have to put in a load of figures and let the car find its balance and give it all the measurements and it sets its own height. Nifty. Um, I've taken this sensor off and I'm gonna put this somewhere safe. The reason I've done that is because I'm gonna take the lower arm off. Now all the accounts that I've uh, seen say that when you pull this bolt out here, the wishbone will try and ping up because it's under tension because of the uh, rubber bushes. Um, the other reason I'm going to take the wishbone out is because I want to change the bushes. As I've already said, I need to fit purple bushes to that. And I can't fit purple bushes to it while it's fitted to the car. And this is where this car's got a slightly different setup. Well, I say slightly different. It's not massively abnormal in, uh, in modern, modern engineering. But basically, you have a situation where the knuckle here that the brake... Uh, disc attaches to the hubs in and everything like that pivots on the upright so this upright here that is connected to the strut and anchored to the car doesn't rotate in a car with mcpherson struts more primitive suspension the whole thing would just turn but on this car 
just this bit does. Uh, Ford did a similar thing on the Mark One Focus RS, but they made a massive deal out of it and called it Revo Knuckle. But in reality, other manufacturers had been doing it already. It's nothing new. This car has it. This whole system here is also fitted to the Peugeot 407. Um, but what it does do is it splits the steering from the suspension. So in theory, when you bang your foot down, you don't necessarily get the car pitching and rising about and torque steering um, like it might do if all of this was one rigid lump that was just pivoting up there and right at the top. Uh, it also means you don't have to worry about having bearings at the top of the arch because it's got a ball joint here and a ball joint here. This is the frog's foot one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the arm, get that out of the way. We'll go back and do some bushes on that later, but the drive shaft in there is what I need to get out. Um, so I'm going to remove the arm and it's three bolts on the top here and some more on the back there. Then I'm going to measure the arm and make sure it has got the correct arm in it because if it has a Peugeot 407 lower arm fitted, as a lot of them do because they're much cheaper, they are wrong. The geometry is very slightly different. So I'm going to make sure mine isn't one of them. These are what it got the advisory on, and they are known for going, really. It's quite a clever design, but at the same time, they, they do fail, so it's not that clever. I'm just looking at that and seeing Cecily vibes all over again. Right, well, not too bad. So I've got the three bolts out for this ball joint, and it, there's quite a bit of play in it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, the bearings are hanging out. I've never done one of these before. Just, just watching people on YouTube do it. A fella in France couldn't understand what he was saying, but I still got the gist of it. It was quite good. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think those bearings have seen better days. Also, what's seen better days? It's got to be my noise, but that's floppy as anything as well. It has had previous MOT failures and advisories for split gaiters. So straight away that makes you think, well, how much grease did it lose? So I'm just going to do the whole shaft. Sit rep. Um, yeah, so we started getting bits of it off. Um, I need to remove this section here, the knuckle. So I can press out the wheel bearing because that wheel bearing is indeed knackered. The ABS sensor's in there. I can't get the ABS sensor out. It is reluctant. I'm pretty sure that if I start getting a little bit more forceful with it, it's just going to break. So what I've done is I've ordered one. In fact, I haven't ordered one. I've ordered two. I've ordered one from the local motor factor and I found a genuine one on eBay that was reduced to clear. A genuine Citroen one. So... I'll fit the genuine one if it comes. If it doesn't come in time, I'll put the aftermarket one in. And then if I get the genuine one and the aftermarket one comes here, if the aftermarket one can't be returned, I'll keep it and use it as a spare or something or sell it on. Or fit it to the other side if it needs it. Uh, if the uh, genuine one arrives in time, that is. If it doesn't arrive in time, I'll just fit the aftermarket one and keep the genuine one by. So what I don't want is for this thing to be stuck on the ramp waiting for a part, because that is a killer. What I'm going to try and do is get this drive shaft out because it's held in with two bolts up there on a bearing that's in the centre of the shaft and those are notoriously difficult to get apart. So that's the bit I'm going to concentrate on now. Could have done without the ABS sensor woes, but they never come out. They never come out. So uh, at least now I've got some coming, I can get medieval with that one. Yeah, so this is why this is a nightmare. You can see the bolt I've removed up there that's holding the drive shaft in. That bolt came out. That bolt is here. There is another one. Um, yeah. How the flippity f are you supposed to get that out? I have punched the anti roll bar on that car so many times. The two bolts that hold the driver shaft in, one of them I showed you earlier on. The other one, I don't want to come out. Steel bolt, aluminium housing, right next to a catalytic converter. What could go wrong? Luckily, I've undone it enough that the, the half moon bracket that holds the drive shaft in is um, 
able to be rotated out of the way. So it shouldn't stop the drive shaft coming out now. What's going to stop the drive shaft coming out now is rust around the bearing. That wasn't the bit that was supposed to be difficult. This is the bit that's supposed to be difficult coming up. <sighs> One drive shaft. I'd started trying to pull it apart in the middle because in a BX, if you want to do those, uh, that, that CV boot in the middle, um, it pretty much falls apart. That's the bearing there, look. But once I'd got that off and started levering it and being a bit abusive with it, it started to come free. So that was actually a bit of a result. So this is uh, what we have here now in the hole. So you've got, you can see where the shaft used to go through in the big alloy housing. It's starting to get a bit dark in here now. That's the, the bracket that the shaft sat in. You can see the chewed up bolt just uh, remaining in there. I'm, that is reluctant to come out, but what I'll do is I'll tighten it back up and then see if I can get a load of spray on it from the other side. Yeah, it's really not wanting to come out that. But now I can get to the remaining wishbone bolts and pull the wishbone out, which is good. And then I've just got to get the knuckle out of there, which there is now access. That nut in there, there is a nut under all that crap. And then split this ball joint here at the top. And away we go, and then I shall, I, I bought new ball joints to replace in that, although that's a big aluminium housing with a steel ball joint. I wonder what that'll be like. <sighs> Wishbone. Uh, that wasn't before time, look at that. I reckon I could rip that off if I tried hard enough. Absolutely cream cracker, that is. And that's because the car, where it's been going up and down, over the bumps, it's getting rotated. Like this. Oh, there you go, I've broken it. There you go. <laughs> there wasn't much left, of, oh, hang on, is that the right wishbone? <gasps> That's a 407 one. Oh, I think. Oh no, I've got the wrong wishbones here. That needs to be a bit deeper. Damn, that's a concern. I might have to make some spaces. I shall go and consult the uh, interweb. One up, right off. Oh, that'll be my noise. So I can change the bearing on that. That'll be easy. I have a problem. So as you will remember, I was delighted uh, to get the uh, wishbone off and remove this bracket from the end of it. It's not all good. Um, here is the wishbone. Uh, this is the way it was mounted. So it kind of sits in the, move over here. It sits in the car and does that. So the wheel was connected here. And when the wheel, go, the wheel goes over a bump, the wishbone does this. It rotates on the back one, which is ruined. And that one there basically gets a hard time. It gets uh, bent. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they don't make them both like that. I imagine it's something to do with compliance or handling or something. We've got a problem. That wishbone is not for a Citroen C6. I know it's come off the Citroen C6. Basically, this has been replaced with an aftermarket one. The reason this is a problem is because the aftermarket ones aren't made for C6s. They're made for Peugeot 407s. Peugeot 407s have a different geometry than the C6, and it's all to do with this bush. The, the center of that hole there, the hole center in this bush, is pretty much in line with that flat point here. Let's move it in a bit closer. So the hole center there is in line with that. The C6 should have that bush higher than this. And what that would do is instead of the arm being mounted like this in the car, it would be mounted more, I mean, this is exaggerated, it would be like that. And what that does is that improves the anti-dive geometry, which is why BX front wishbones are angled. You can't have angled front wishbones on conventionally sprung cars as easily because it's something to do with the way it makes them ride. It, it makes them ride badly. But because this is hydrodynamic, they can, because they can tune the suspension to deal with it. But... If you then take that wishbone away 
and put in one that's flat, effectively, it's not flat, but let's say for argument's sake it's flat, I think it's acting abnormally. Because one of the things I've noticed on that car when I'm driving it, you drive down the road and it's, it's smooth, but if the front goes into a, like a dip in the road, the front goes in and then the back goes in. And that car is quite clever. You may have noticed. What it does is when the front wheels go over a bump, the ECU for the suspension basically profiles that bump and the speed that it's going and everything, all the parameters, and it knows the back end's about to hit it. So the back end goes over it even better than the front one over it. That's the theory. I've not noticed it in this car that much. I've noticed it sometimes when you go in and out of a bump, it arrests the back end because it knows that it's gonna do this. So you go into bump, you come back out of it and the back kind of goes up and then stops dead. And the rest of your guts carry on going down. It's quite weird, but it's better because it keeps the car flat, but not always. And sometimes you go into these bumps and the car's doing this. And the headlights are like on the sky, uh, in the sky, sorry, and then down at the floor and, and it's pitching around. And it just seems wrong. It doesn't seem very good. BXs don't do that. There's a, there's a divot around the corner from here. Drive a BX over it, it just laughs at it. It doesn't, it just straight through. But the C6 gets caught out on it and it, it shouldn't because that's the most clever version of the suspension they made. That one, it should just eradicate bumps completely. I did read that there was a software update that Citroen did to get rid of that pitching and diving. But it seems odd that it would have been left like that, left the factory. I would have thought like magazines and things would have ripped it to pieces because it's, it's, it's all this. Yeah, it's smooth. It's great. And when you sat on the motorway, it's like being in a train. It's just, it's not hardly any noise. The scenery is just whooshing past. It feels like you sat in a, in a train. It's not an old one, like a new one. So every now and then for it to get all caught out and get a bit like that, and I'm not convinced. And I'm wondering, is it because my wishbone should be like this? Could be, couldn't it? I've had a look. It looks to me, I don't know for sure yet. I've run out of a bit of time to do the investigating for about an hour now. I think the C5 hydraulic, hydropneumatic C5, the, the X7 Mark III, the one they tried to say was German, which is cheap version of a C6, basically. Um, no offence to anyone who's got one. Um, that uses the same wishbone, according to the data I found so far, as the C6. So that would make sense. Whereas the Peugeot 407, which the majority, or steel sprung C5s, majority of cars with this wishbone and that suspension, that, that hardware, would have coil sprung. You know, there's not many C6s or C5 exclusives about. So most of them have this. But the C6 has as I say, it has a version where the center point there of that bush here is higher than this flat. So it's kind of a bit higher up and it raises the back of the wishbone. So there are, there's problems. I can order some bushes in um, to, well, and then I'd have to hack the bushes out and put me purple ones in, because I have to have purple bushes. But I'm not entirely sure um, because they have to come from Europe by the look of it. Citroen, when they used to sell wishbones, they were huge money, and now they don't even sell them anymore. So you can't buy the bushes on their own. They only sell you the whole wishbone. One of the other suggestions that I've seen is to make spacers. So you put a 10 mil spacer under here and under here and raise the whole thing up, which creates the same effect. It raises the back of the wishbone. I can't see a problem with doing it, but I don't know. I don't really want to, but yeah, I, I can't I can't see why it would, would cause a problem. <sighs> yeah, I, I think I'm, in the absence of the right bit, which it doesn't look like I can find in the UK, um, I think that might be what I need to do. Just space it up. Because it doesn't, at the end of the day, the geometry and everything like that on that car is not as it's meant to be. It's It's modified. And it's not modified for the better, I don't think, so... And then what I'll have to do is then reset the suspension again when I put it all back together. But yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably make some little spacers to go under here. It's a 14 mil hole there and a 12 mil hole there. So 
Um, you'd need a certain type of, a certain grade of aluminium to make that. And uh, yeah, I can't get hold of that easily. So I think I might just go with the steel, just grease it and paint it or whatever, stop it rusting. I mean, it bolts the steel, so. But yeah, so that's a, that's a bit of a bummer. I'm gonna see if I can get this bush out of there. It is a bit of a pig that, but at the same time it's not, because it means perhaps there's a reason why that's driving a little bit like this. Maybe I'll fix it by doing this, which would be good, be really good, because I'm, I'm desperate to drive it again. I love driving it. Um, it's very comfy. It is very smooth. It's only when it, it just gets caught out every now and then on bumps. Um, you know, if it weren't for that, it would be pretty good. Pretty bloody good. So that's what I'm going to do with that. I've got that out now so I can get the wheel bearing out on this side. Uh, the wheel bearing on the passenger side doesn't need doing. That was done a year or no, a couple of years ago. So on the other side, I will still have to pull the drive shaft out to get the wishbone out because the other side is the same as well. Um, I'm going to have to change all the settings again. I'm going to have to re-update the suspension, do all the settings on that with a computer. I'm going to have to get the tracking done again and everything. But, I mean, I wasn't even, I didn't even need to change that bush. There was no mention of that bush in the MOT or anything like that. I just thought, well, if I take it all apart and find that it is knackered, because they do chew through these, it's one of the reasons for going for the purple ones, is hopefully I won't go through them anymore. So, well, it's been a day of learning, but it is a part. I've got everything I need to get off of it, I believe. I think I've got one bush to try and get out, um, which I bought a special tool for that, which will be a piece of cake hopefully, because there's nothing in the way of it. Um, and I've got to sort out that thread on that uh, drive shaft retaining bolt. I should probably check the drive shaft is the same as the old one. So that'll probably do me for today. Pick up again tomorrow.